Dope Fam, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my labor and delivery story. Uh, my baby is now two months, well she will be two months on Saturday and um, I'm finally getting to this video. I've just been trying to relax these past two months and enjoy motherhood and you know it's just so much like stuff thrown at you but I absolutely love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything and um, I'm sorry for the ratchet background that we have here but I will get better eventually. My daughter is in the back in the crib. I'm not covering her or anything. I made it sound weird. But I just put like this here because, I don't know, I just wanted it to look a little better. But it looks ratchet as fuck. But, um, she está tomando su bibi. Okay, so, let's get this started. So it all started on Saturday night. Um, I have a video of me, like, rubbing my belly. I I was having hella contractions, but I make it seem like I was having painful contractions, hella contractions, I'm stupid. I was having like cramps, you know, like period cramps, and I was just like, all right, it's getting uncomfortable, and I thought that was the worst, so I was just like, I was like putting up a front, I'm like, oh my god, this is just painful, but it was just uncomfortable as hell, and then I was just having really bad back pain. I had did not have any pains around my vagina, it was just in my back, and um... And so then that was all night I slept and then I woke up Sunday and in the morning my mom was going to go to work and I was like mom you know what don't go to work I feel like you know like I'm just having contractions and I had been mu losing my mucin my mucin and I have been mu I had been losing my mucus plug for the past week I was having like this sticky discharge TMI, but you know, it's a labor and delivery story. So if you're listening to me, you're either interested in my story or you're gonna deliver soon or you just delivered or something around those and something around the lines of birth. And um and so I was like, you know what, I don't feel comfortable you go to work because what if I go into labor, you know, like I don't wanna be like calling you and waiting for you and all that shit. And so she's like, Alright, so she called in and um so I was, my contractions were like every like like every five minutes and they were just a little bit painful and it was just calm and I was just I was kind of like leaning like this towards um, her crib and had I was like rubbing my back and I was just like deep breathing and stuff and then it got to the point where I got a root I started to get a really bad headache and I was just like what the hell like why is my head hurting and then it got even worse like I started to like I couldn't even open my eyes because like it wasn't even dark I meant right in my room but like like it was just hurting my eyes to even open my eyes so then I started to get worried because that can maybe mean that my blood pressure was high and so I called the on-call nurse and I was just like hey you know I'm 39 weeks and like four days I'm having these really bad headaches and she's like oh I'm worried that your blood pressure might be high and I was just like uh, yeah me too and so then she was like just go into the hospital you know so they're gonna check you and um, I had been to the hospital like twice in the past like month because of like a scare. One time I thought my amniotic fluid was like leaking. The second time I was having contractions and I was just like, what the heck? You know, I was just scared because I'm a first time mom, you know, I'm going to go to the hospital if I feel like something's wrong. And so um, she's like, if I were you, go to the hospital, you know, just so they can evaluate you. Because at this point, at my last appointment, I was already one centimeter dilated. And I didn't know if I was if I was going to go quick that you know what I mean I didn't want to get birth like on the way there or home even though that would have been kind of cool <laughs> actually not really <laughs> so um she's like go to the hospital so that I start crying because I was just really scared at this point because I was just like oh my god it's today the day I wasn't scared I was more like overwhelmed like oh my god it's today the day I'm gonna meet her and uh, my husband had started hugging me and kissing me he's like you know what like stay positive maybe today's the day that you're gonna meet her instead of like you know like don't be scared i'll be here for you this isn't that what's wrong my love my daughter's a moaner and groaner so if you hear her back there moaning and groaning she's just trying to go to sleep So I get to the hospital, it's around like 1 o'clock, 
and um, they put the things on my stomach and then they started monitoring me and I wasn't having like major contractions that were making me dilate because they checked my cervix and I was still at one centimeters and so she's like they're probably gonna send you back home you know and just like just keep an eye on your contractions and so I was like all right you know I was used to them sending me back home and I was kind of bummed but she at this point she had not told me that she was kind of worried but so fast forward so she calls a doctor and she's like hey you know she's not dilating anymore and her contractions are not like big or anything and so he was like well um send her home you know and like she can keep on mon monitoring her contractions if they get worse come back and he gave the the nurse the option like you can let her go if you feel comfortable like discharging her or what and I guess she doesn't she didn't feel comfortable with discharging me because I guess um, Nina Nina was not having like these baby um, spikes on the monitor so she tells me this after like a few hours of sitting there like with the monitor on and she's like actually she's like um, your baby's not having these spikes on the monitor she's like before I let you go back home I kind of want to double check that everything's okay you know she's like it's she's like baby's moving but I just want to make sure that, you know, everything's okay. So they send in, like, this group. I forget the test is, but it's, like, a 20-minute ultrasound. And in those 20 minutes, baby's supposed to move at least once. And they're supposed to breathe on their own at least once. And um, at this point, I didn't know that babies breathe inside of your belly. But I guess, like, once they get bigger, they kind of do practice breathing once in a blue moon. And so, um, but as they get closer to the like delivery they start to breathe on their own more often and so long story short they did a 20 minute test nina did not move nina did not breathe in that 20 minute you're supposed to get a 10 out of 10 as a perfect score and i got a 3 out of 10 and so at this point i'm just like you're telling me that baby's not okay and you barely tell me this once you told me i was gonna get discharged <sighs> And so at this point I was kind of scared and so was my mom and so was Hera. Hera was like, what the hell going on? And I was just like, man, I know as much as you do, but I was just asking all these questions and she's like, let me call the doctor. So she calls the doctor. So she calls the doctor and, um, and then she walks in like 20 minutes later, we're like playing with her phone and she's like, you're trying to have a baby today? And I was just, and I remember I looked at her and I was like, what do you mean? she's like well doctor said we we should just induce you because it looks like baby is like under stress or something and i was like what the f like what like it just this all is just also quick yes i did want to meet her but like i didn't know i was gonna have her today and 20 like 30 minutes ago i didn't know anything was wrong first of all and um and so i was like okay like yeah i guess today's the day and that was 13th so it was mother's day and so i was just like oh my god i'm gonna have her on mother's day like this is perfect and so then they baby's not like perfect and so then the doctor was like well might as well just keep you here and induce you and so here i am yeah so they just barely started an IV. Yeah, I'm hoping it goes by quick. Oh man. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they that's what my cousin said. She's like, do not stay in bed once they give you the touch she's like stop walking. Okay. Me saca las patas. My mom's way of recording. <laughs> <laughs> El pan. He started quick after that. Like, so then they had to admit me into the hospital because at first I was just like getting like checked on, you know, instead of like being admitted into the hospital. So then, you know, you have to sign all those consents, yada, yada. They started my IV and then real quick, they started Pitocin. They started Pitocin at seven. It took so long. I think Nina's trying to poop. Who was I on? Oh, that I got there around 1 and I they didn't start Pitocin until 7. And so then the plan was to start Pitocin and um, increase one dose per hour. And so the biggest, the more, the, 
the highest Pitocin you can get is 20. And so then from 7 to 11, that's 4 hours. So they were going to increase it 1 dose per hour. And so then, you know, they started at 7, and I was just like there, like, I don't feel anything, you know, I, I was just chilling, honestly. And I was just like in a good-ass mood, and I was just on my phone, I was Snapchatting, I was just like living the life in bed. And then, um, 11 o'clock came, came through, and I still wasn't dilating anymore, and I wasn't having any contractions or anything painful, I was just like having a little bit of cramps, but nothing too, like, crazy at all. And so then they were like, all right, we're going to keep increasing it. And so then they started to increase it by twos. Like, so then around um, 3 a.m., I think I was around like three centimeters. Yeah, I was around like three, three centimeters. And then that's when they were like, all right, we're going to break your water. So because after we break your water, it goes by quick. And so I was like, oh, shit, you know, like at this point, I didn't have the epidural. And I, I, I. I didn't want to get the epidural, you know, like, it's not that I didn't want to, I just wanted to try it naturally, and if I needed it, then I would get it, like, I was not, like, I'm not gonna get the epidural, no, you know, like, if I need it, I need it, like, what can I do? And so then three o'clock came and they broke my water and you guys um I so I felt everything like let me try to explain to you how it is when they break your water. Like it didn't hurt. I I would hear horror stories about like it hurts because they stick this big old thing inside of you like a like a sharp thing and they poke it and then they like your water comes out. But like so they you know just made me open my legs and then they like stuck this like hook thing and they just like popped it and I didn't feel any of that. I didn't burn or anything. And then um and then you just feel you know it's your water when like when if you can't control it, like if you stop and it just keeps on going. And that's how it felt. So it was just like this warm water coming out and I was just like, What the hell? This is so weird because it feels like you're peeing yourself. And then um and then throughout the next few hours there was still more and more. Like if I would get up, I would start dripping. And so then these contractions started to get really bad like that whole morning it was like 5 a.m and i was just like what the hell like this shit hurts at this point i couldn't i couldn't be laying down anymore like i was just having contractions and contractions and contractions so i was you know walking around i was bouncing on ball i was like trying to do everything that i could and um and so then um you know what this was still in the morning so it was like 5 a.m 6 a.m 7 a.m blah 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 so forth and I was just having contractions like really bad contractions where like I couldn't even like talk through them but I wasn't dilating and so I mean as fast as I should have and so then they kept checking me and for some reason like I would be like five centimeters one at one hour and I'd be like three centimeters again so I was just like I would move forward but then I would go like five back you know so I was just like what the hell and it started to get frustrating like at this point it was already like noon the next day and I was just like 
man, like, you know, like, like, I just didn't think it was going to be that hard. I was just like, man, like, I'm in so much pain. And I would just get so happy when the nurse would come in and, like, check me. Because I'm like, all right, I have all this pain. I'm guessing I'm, you know, dilated a lot more. But that was not the case. And so, um, around, like, and so, the, the 14th, which is the day she was born. Like, throughout the day, I was just, like, I was just in so much pain. Um, it got to the point where they had to stop Pitocin because if you get too much Pitocin, your body, like, stops to do its own thing. So then you just stop dilating. Like, your body gets used to it, I guess. And so then they stopped it for a few hours, yada, yada. And it was just, it was just like pain, no pain, pain, no pain. And, I mean, you just get exhausted, man, because how can I explain this pain to you? It was, like, in my, it, at this point, it was not in my back. It was not in my, in my stomach. It was, like, on my vagina lips. <laughs> I know this is, like, disgusting or TMI or whatever, but it was literally my vagina that I felt like it was burning, like, if there was, like, fire on my vagina lips. Like, it was so painful. And, um, I couldn't, like, I couldn't. I was just, like, deep breathing. I would try and breathe and, you know, like, meditate while I was going through these contractions, and I just couldn't. Like, I was in tears, like... At this point, my mom was crying. I was crying. Hedda was crying. Like, we were all crying. Because I was just... I was just done, man. This, let's see. How many hours in was... I mean, I got there at... My real contraction started, like, at... Like, at, thir, like at 5 a.m. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'd been in pain for like 20 hours. Jesus Christ. That's a lot. And so, um, and so then I got stuck at six centimeters and I just wasn't dilating, but I was having pain, but I wasn't dilating. And at this point, my water had been broken at 3 a.m. So then you start to get worried because there's more risk for infection if your water has broken and your baby's still inside of you. And so around like 7 p.m., um, was it seven Fuck, honestly, I don't even remember anymore. I was just so out of it. But long story short, I was just in so much pain. I just keep saying I was in pain. But then the nurse comes in and she was just like, um, be because at this point, everybody was thinking about a C-section because like I wasn't dilating anymore. I was in pain. Nina had no water in there. And, you know, like, and what's next, which is a C-section. But the nurses were trying to not get, get a C-section, you know, like, they were like, we're here to help you to, to, to dial it, you know, they put a peanut between my legs, they made me walk, they made me bounce on it, they made me do, like, all these exercises and stuff, and I was just still not dilating. And so, um, I was, I, at one point, I was just done, diet, pff, done. And so then they put the epidural, and um, the nurse was like, if I were you, I would just get the epidural. Like, she just, this is what she told me. She was like, my first baby, she's like, I really did not want the epidural, and so I didn't get it. But I regret it because just, just, she's like, I was miserable once I was actually having her. She's like, so the second time around, I was just like, just give me the epidural, you know, like, why am I going to suffer? And so she's like, if I were you, just get the epidural. And so she was just like, I was like, all right, I'll get the epidural. And honestly, I'm not scared of needles, but like I've seen an epidural go in, and I was fucking scared. And so then they made me sit on the on the bed, you know, and like curl up. And it's first of all, it's hard to curl up with a big ass belly in front of you, and you're in the middle of a contraction, but you're supposed to fucking stay still. And so um, the nurse like was hugging me in front. And they made had a sit down in front of me he was like i'm not gonna faint but the nurse was like just sit down because you know what if you do faint and so um she sat in front she was standing in front of me he made me like go like this and honestly the epidural hurt like i know it doesn't hurt most people but it hurt me and i just don't understand why but it was just like super painful and i was just like oh my god okay. like i was just in so much pain but he was like don't move and i was just like i have a contraction it's hurting like i i i 
I didn't know what to do. I was crying. I was like crying hysterically, but without trying to move. Um, and so I got the epidural and my God, it was like the most beautiful thing of life. Like you just stop feeling everything. Your legs go numb and you just stop feeling pain. So at this point, I'm getting my makeup done. After the epidural, I'll put a clip in here. And so then I started to do my makeup. I was like, hell yeah, this shit's gonna be easy. I don't feel shit, you know, like I'm ready to push, like this isn't that. But um, I was still stuck at six. And so then it came around like 8.30 p.m. and I was really bad at this point. Like I, I couldn't, my, um, I started to feel everything again, but it was just like on like back of my, like half of me. Um, at this point, I, I remember I, I'm sorry I'm all over the place, I just don't remember, like everything is a blur, but I just remember I was just shaking so much and and then like I, I started to feel like half of my body again, like, and then like it was just so painful, oh my god, I don't know how people have natural birth, but I'm serious, like half of my vagina was just like, in so, 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 so much pain, I have never felt this pain in my life and it was just unbearable like I just couldn't and I was just like holding on to something and oh my god it was just so painful and so then um they called the doctor and they were like hey you know what she's her she's in pain again she's not dilating she's still at six and the doctor was just like all right we're gonna have to do a c-section you know because at this point I was probably way too out of it and way too tired to push um so they were like we need to do c-section and I just wasn't dilating anymore so then they take me, so then they told me you're going to get a C-section and then I started to like freaking cry. Like I was just like, I was just so devastated because I really wanted to go through like a birth. You know what I mean? Like I, I know like when you have a C-section, it's still a birth, but like the experience is totally different and I guess it's like really hard to recover, yada, yada. So I just started to cry really bad and then like my parents and had I were just trying to comfort me, they were just like, you know, at this point we have to do what's best for you and her. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And so then they took me to the OR. And right here, I'm so out of it again. And I'll pull more clips. I, I don't know how the hell I took my phone in there and I recorded. Oh, she FaceTime? No, she's What's up? Le manda el foto. Either here or South Dakota, I don't know. How you feel? But like Less. South Dakota, they, there's no. And so I'll put that in here. And so then, um, that was that. And then, I was laying in bed, and then they were about to do the C-section. But then I guess some other lady came to birth. And so then, the freaking doctor left. And my doctor was on call, was not on call that night. So then, I didn't get, I, the doctor that took me now was not my doctor. It was like her, it was like the assistant or some shit like that. And so this mother effer leaves and leaves me on the OR table for 40 minutes while he goes and delivers another baby. And I was in pain again, you know, like, oh my God. But, um, but while he left, they started to put the, they do the spinal block. So then at that point, you, I didn't feel anything at all again. And that was just through my IV that I had to poke me. But, um, I, I was just out of it. My mom says I was like coming in and out of like consciousness and the doctor was not there and we were just like what the hell and my dad um my mom had had uh, came into the OR with me and then um I lie and so then um they start to cut me open this is and that and then I hear them like I don't remember what they were saying because I was just so out of it and so drugged out but it they, it wasn't something good and they were like worried and then, um, so then baby comes out and just say cries for like a second and then stops crying. 
and then they I remember they they call the code and that's when like if like a baby or a person goes unconscious like they call it again so like all the nurses and all the doctors come so Nina came out and she stopped breathing like she was just blue and they tried to resuscitate her so she I remember turning over and she was like in the in like the incubator or whatever and she was blue like blue like blue and at this point I was crying like I've never cried before my husband was crying my mom was crying because like Nina at this point was not like alive you know and we could hear everything like they were freaking out and nobody was like updating me now it's just like what's going on and I was just crying and crying and crying and then um it took them 20 minutes to bring her back Whew, I don't want to get emotional but it was like this the most scariest thing ever because like you never think this is gonna happen to you you know what I mean but like um, but uh, yeah so they ca she came out and then they t t t took them 20 minutes for her to like come back and they like did like CPR and all that stuff but um, she was health healthy after she didn't have to go to the NICU or anything and so then and then they give me her for the first time and it's like I remember I looked at her and I was just like oh my god like this is my little baby Like, like your mother, like your mother instincts just come out like so quickly, and she was just so beautiful and precious. And then um, she started to latch on my boob like right away. Um, she started to like to suck on my chest. I was like, alright, let me give her boob. So I gave her boob, and she started sucking on my boob, and it was just like, oh my god, like my little baby knew what to do. It was just so amazing. And and after that, everything was just perfect, man. Like she was just so healthy. So she, after all that, she was born at nine. 9.30 p.m. She weighed 7 pounds, 5 ounces, and she was 21, 25 inches long. And it was the most beautiful experience of my life. I can't wait to have another child, honestly, but I'm going to wait, I think, a little bit for her to be a little bit older. And um, for all you moms out there who have a plan on birth, please don't because, like, if you're stuck on a plan and... And that's how you think it's gonna go like just it you know like it's best to not have a plan because things might not always go the way you think it's gonna go and then you're gonna get bombed out and if, at the end of the day it's what's best for you and and baby you know that's like the most healthiest thing you can do and you just gotta go with the flow of things you know and so and so yeah and so Nina was out and um, here's my love let me show you let me show you my love but she's sleeping, my amor. Just I don't need her, my amor. Just I don't need her, my baby. And so, yeah, guys, um, I will be doing another video probably soon on what's um, the best thing about being a mother and what's the worst thing about being a mother. So, just don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're not part of the family yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, button and hit that bell so you can get notifications whenever I upload. I think I said that shit right, but anyway, thanks for watching.